if ever that was a time we needed to rebuild the men, it's now. Things are going out of control because men are not leading the way. Men are not being perfect examples and doing perfect things. And in the meantime, all hell is breaking loose. And the unfortunate thing is because for the most part, it happened with the black families where the men became women and the women are taking over, pretending to be men, pretending to know what they're doing, and they don't. Blacks are leading the way in destruction. They're leading the way. And it's like, it's a spiritual battle, and I'll explain that in a minute. But it's really, really, it seemed to have gone from 89 miles per hour to 100 since Obama was in the White House. Obama really got it rolling. And it's just been destruction ever since. It went from 90 to 100 overnight where the blacks are destroying everything. Like, it's the darnest thing I've ever seen. And the reason the blacks are destroying because men are no good in the black community. They have lost their identity. They are totally acting and thinking, thinking and acting as women. If you notice within the average black man, there is no sense of self-control, no sense of the ability to start your own thing, raise your own family, protect your own community. It's just no sense of building at all. They're like women. They're begging and blaming the white man. It's as though they have realized that white people are superior to black. They won't say it out loud. But their action says that. The men, the black men, I understand the women doing it because they can't help it. They're insecure. But the black men are acting, they're literally acting. In their action, they are saying that white men are superior to black men. They got this stupid thing where, I guess, an NBA or the basketball team or whoever they are, they want to do a dumb thing called the national, I mean, called the black anthem uh, before a, a game start or something. I, I think they're going to do it under the ground somewhere. But they want to do a black national anthem. That does, that's not even, it doesn't even logically make sense. It, it's like there are two worlds in America. We are one nation under God, right? And there's a national anthem, anthem, American national anthem. But the blacks are so dumb and so weak and so inferior, they want a, nas a black national anthem as though they're not American. I've been saying for a long time that when I was growing up, black people, black men and women, were more, they had more confidence with, for the, within themselves that they can do it too. They can build, they can buy, they can build, they can raise families, they can play ball, they can do this without all the mess. And when I tell people that, they don't, they tend not to believe me, but I'm not making it up. All this stuff you see happening now with the blacks, it wasn't like this prior to the Civil Rights Movement. The Baba Gotu guy sent me something. I'm trying to find it because he sent it a few days ago. Uh, I can't read the whole headline as to where he got it from, but it says that most black economic process came before, before 60s civil rights laws. Most black economic progress came before the 60s civil rights laws before the civil rights movement started, which should have never happened 
Blacks have not recovered since and just been down the hill. Uh, black economics was fine. And they weren't thinking of it as black economics. It was just black people, but Americans working and doing their thing. One of the reasons the Jews have done so well after their little, you know, the, the Holocaust thing that happened uh, is that they they built their families. They educated their families. They taught their families to work. They didn't go out uh, trying to make people just give them things. And blacks were doing that too under the Jim Crow laws and prior to the so-called civil rights movement. Incredibly, most of the closing of the wage gap and most of the advancement of black Americans into the middle class occurred before 1965 when the Voting Rights Act was passed. But Congress in 1965 did not think about what uh, its immigration decision would do to the black economic progress. Instead, they also, in 1965, passed a massive immigration act that led the way after more reckless action by Congress in 1990 to more than tripling the arrival of foreigners, foreign workers to complete, to compete in the labor market. So they brought in all these foreign workers. That hurt the blacks as well. Before 1965, racism and the absence of civil rights laws and affirmative action could not halt phenomenal economic process for black Americans during the tight labor condition. If the um, black economic trends in 1940s, in the 1940s, 1950s, and 1960s had continued, America would be a different so, uh, society today. I'm telling you, prior to the civil rights movement, black Americans were doing fine, folks. Thank you. They were not fighting. They were not begging. They were not living in projects. They were not blaming the white man. And especially black men. It's disgusting to see black men picking and rallying and burning and talking about burning down something if you don't give them something. It's ridiculous. It's just not manly. But because they don't have a, man, uh, a manly mindset, have Nick get the phone for me, they don't realize that that's what's going on. Isn't that amazing? Black men, not all, not all, but most, way most, they literally think and act like women now. Look who's leading the way in, in all the destruction that's happening in cities. But it's all spiritual. You're looking at black people and then now young white brainwashed kid people, thugs, being controlled by evil. But you're looking at the physical, and if you don't understand, if you've not been born of the spirit, you can't really see what's driving them. It's evil in operation. Anyone that think that black lives matter is evil. Anyone who think that we need a so-called black national anthem is evil. Anyone who are following these radical women who are destroying and burning down and getting in your faces, at least white people faces, and, just, and th uh, interfere with their lunch or dinner at a cafe is evil. It's not going to get better because the power is in the man. The real power of love, which is from God, completely from him, is in the man. But the men have been destroyed starting in the homes with their mothers and weak fathers. And so they don't have a chance. I'm looking at these folks who want to put their children back into the public school system. And the men are allowed it to happen because they can't stand up to the mothers of the children, right? And so they are okay in it. They want to, they now see with their physical eyes what the school has done to the, the children. They're saying, one fat black woman we showed said that white people were subhuman. 
I used to hear you, uh, Louis Farrakhan, say stuff like that when I moved to California. And I started listening to dumb Jesse Jackson and the NWCP and others. And I believed into that lie for a while. And so I was going to Louis Farrakhan's meetings. He would come to L.A. and be at the forum there speaking. He said things like that. White people were created by, he said stupid stuff like, Black people were the first on the earth. And some black, people, black men turned evil and they went into a laboratory and created the white people. And that's how we ended up with the blue-eyed devil. You have no idea how you've been set up. It's a spiritual. This is evil, what's happening. It's really, really. Mama mia, hola, si, senor, evil. Men, you need to Forgive mama so you can overcome the flesh, the, uh, the wrong identity, and return to your father. And then you'll see how to deal with all this crap without fear. Seek first the kingdom of God in his right way, and all will be added. Think not about what you're going to eat, what you're going to wear, where you're going to go, who your friends are. He will take care of that. But unless you overcome that fallen state and forgive your earthly father so that you can be drawn into, back to your natural identity, you're not going to be able to do it because things are going to be more important to you than what is right. And you're going to have, you will continue to have the fear of losing things, jobs, houses, clothes, fake friendships and stuff. So you're not going to be able to stand up. But perfect love casts out fear. And it's in the men. Amazing. And don't forget to like, follow, tweet, subscribe, and share the Jesse Lee Peterson Radio Show, folks. We really appreciate it. We are at war. It is a spiritual battle for the soul of America. And it's going to take all of us to do it.